work very well at first. What did? The market. <laughs> a bit too well, if you ask me. Right. I will ask you. Uh, what do you mean the market worked too well? Well, look what happened to the fishers. What did happen with the fishers? You remember their catches? Oh, of course I do. They catch salmon one night, perch the next, all lovely and fresh, two lots of wonderful fish on offer on their stall at the same time. Hmm, true. And what did they exchange their salmon for? Ah, they did very well out of that. For each load of salmon they were guaranteed to get uh, a dozen eggs, twelve bags of corn and a leg of lamb. Yeah, and what did they get for each load of perch? Well, they didn't do as well from that, did they? Uh, maybe only half a dozen eggs, three bags of corn and a couple of chops if they were lucky. Yeah, but they'd spent the same amount of time fishing for the salmon as they had for the perch, right? Hmm, true. But most people prefer salmon to perch any day, and you can understand why. It was the same with the turnips and the carrots. Oh, Mrs Farmer, you mean? Yeah. She soon yeah. found that Mrs Shepherd would only give her a leg of lamb for turnips. But for a load of carrots, she could get a leg of lamb a couple of chops and a skein of wool. What's more, Mrs Farmer didn't have to work any harder to grow carrots rather than turnips. It's weird, isn't it? Not really. Mrs Shepherd just happens to be partial to carrots, that's all. <laughs> it's another example of a market giving people information. It tells you what people want and it tells you what people don't want. Same thing happened with those shawls I used to take to market. Mm. People seem to get tired of the old favourite designs. Then, as soon as I started to take some of our jazzy new designs, they went like hot cakes, even though I was asking twice as much in exchange for them. Variety. That's what people want, and that's what the market gave them. Choice. Mm, and that's where the trouble began. Mm. The more choice people had, the more complicated the market became. Complicated? I'll say it was complicated. Do you remember the time when we needed a dozen eggs? Oh, yes, do I not. It seemed the simplest thing in the world, didn't it? We'd just made a lovely new red cloak. Nothing seemed simpler than to take it along to Mrs Farmer's stall in the market mm. and swap it for her eggs. I know. But Mrs Farmer didn't want our nice new cloak that day. No, thank you very much, she said. I don't need a new cloak. What I want in exchange for my dozen eggs is something for our supper, like a nice fat salmon. Well, the fishers have a nice fat salmon, so we go along to the fishers with our lovely red cloak. Very nice indeed, says Mr Fisher, but what I actually want is butter. Oh, but of course, it's the cowards who have butter. And do they want our red cloak in exchange for it? Not on your life. Mm. What they need is a beautiful kitchen stool. And who makes stools? Mr Carpenter. Ah. And does he want our beautiful red cloak in exchange for it? Of course he doesn't want our beautiful red... Mm. He does? He does? <laughs> he really does want our beautiful red cloak in exchange for his rotten old stool. Quick, quick. <laughs> so, by swapping our cloak for the stool, the stool for the butter, the butter for the salmon, and the salmon for the eggs. We got what we wanted in the first place. What a hassle for just a few eggs. Whoop, whoop. Oh, more hassle. Oh, I know. I'm worn out. Oh, sometimes you spend most of the day just finding out who wants what. It's such a waste of time and energy. Yeah which we ought to be spending on making the clothes we need to exchange for food. There must be a better system. There must. Yeah, but, but what? You remember last winter, when everybody was short of corn? Mm. Well, if you, if you had corn, you could swap it for anything. Mm. You never had to go round and round from one person to another, collecting things you didn't want, to swap for other things you didn't want, till finally you got the things you did want. You just swapped everything for corn. 
You could even keep it till next week or next month if nobody had what you wanted that market day. That's all very well. You didn't have to lug those things to market and back when you couldn't swap them. And when harvest time came, you could hardly give the stuff away. Hmm. Hey, but, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. But suppose there's something someone always wanted. Suppose there's something we could use, like we used corn last winter. Something like water, for example. <laughs> <laughs> what? But they've got as much as they want of it. And if they haven't, all they've got to do is drop a bucket into the river. It's theirs for the taking. Hmm. Strawberries? They go bad after a couple of days. So, it's got to be something everybody wants and nobody ever has enough of. It mustn't be too heavy and it mustn't ever go bad. There ain't no such thing, my dear. Yes, there is. What? These! The coloured stones I sometimes find by the river. Yes! Everybody wants them for, for rings and bracelets and necklaces and there aren't too many around. What a great idea. Why don't we... Hold on. I've thought of a snag. What? Suppose one of these is worth a dozen eggs. Well, then you simply swap it for a dozen eggs. But suppose you only want half a dozen eggs. Oh, I see what you mean. Can't break it into smaller pieces. Got it. That's it. What? Gold. We could use gold. Nobody ever has enough of it. You could swap a very small amount of it for an awful lot of meat or eggs or cloth. It keeps forever, it doesn't even rust, and you can divide it up really small. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So, that's what we persuaded everybody who used the market to try out. Every family got all the gold it could spare and took it round to Mr Smith. Then he melted it down and made it into small round pieces for them. Some were bigger than others and some were small enough to carry in your pocket or your purse. See? Ooh, shiny, <laughs> aren't they? Then, of course, shopping in the marketplace became so much simpler. If you couldn't do a straight exchange, say a new shirt for Mr Coward's butter, because Mr Coward didn't need a new shirt, you could give him some of your gold in exchange tokens for the butter instead, and he would use them to buy the salmon he did want. And the nice thing was that in the end, the person who did want your shirt would arrive with the exchange tokens, swap them for the shirt, and you'd be back where you started with the same number of exchange tokens you started with. And with the butter you wanted instead of the eggs you didn't want. <laughs> In history, all sorts of objects have been used for money and still are. Iron rings, shells, even tobacco. Though precious metals have been the most popular because they can be easily divided into smaller pieces and because they don't corrode or rust. Eventually, less precious metals such as copper and bronze were to take the place of gold and silver. However, there used to be a problem because any metal could be debased by mixing it with a cheaper metal. To stop that, they used to test the purity of the metal and then stamp it with a special mark, an animal or the head of a king or queen to authenticate it. Also, people used to clip small pieces off the edges of their coins. To stop that, they specially milled the edges to make it obvious if somebody cheated. The system in a similar form can be seen today. These days, printed paper money has mostly replaced coins as a medium of exchange. Today, everybody uses money without having to think about either its origins or what it consists of. But the important point to understand about it is that, of itself, it has no special value. Its value lies only in what you can do with it. Money itself is simply a mechanism for making it easy to exchange things. Like the people are doing in this market now. But of course, money has other advantages. It's very hard to swap, say, a pound of strawberries for a pound of peaches, for instance, because strawberries are finished by June and peaches don't ripen until August. 
But if you sell the strawberries, the money will store their value until August when you can buy your peaches. And money is also a useful measure of worth. If everything has a money price, you can compare the values of a piece of land, a flock of geese, a six months hard work by a carpenter, which otherwise are very hard to compare. It's funny to think that although money itself might be worth almost nothing, it happens to be one of mankind's most powerful as well as most fascinating inventions.